Hey, what's up YouTube? Boulder here, and it's been a while since I did a DCS video. Well, a week. Yeah, I haven't been updating as regularly as I should, and yeah, that's definitely my fault. A little bit of a busy life that I've been living the past couple of weeks or so, but luckily that should be clearing out pretty soon. Anyway, as you can tell, I am in the MiG-21. Let me just get you a better look. Here we go. So there is one thing that I always wanted to do. I want to do a tutorial on the MiG-21 where I start up the plane and then I show you how to intercept an aircraft. There really isn't a whole lot of applications for the MiG-21 when it comes to DCS World, especially in multiplayer, but it does have some pretty good advantages. Just so you guys know, I'm only going to be showing you semi-active radar missile guidance. Um, the reason for that is because infrared guidance is pretty simple. It works just the same as everything else. But moving on, what I'm first going to do is that I am going to get the ground crew and then get some missiles. Alright, so let's go with some... R3S's on the outside. R3S's are going to be air to air. I'm not going to be using them, of course. Then the R3R. Then, of course, a fuel tank. R3R. R3S. And I believe that's what I want. Yeah and nothing there. I forgot that that was actually a smoke thing. Alright, so here's what we have. We have a fuel tank, we have two radar missiles, semi-active radar missiles, two heat-seeking missiles, and then one flare pod. Request rearming. So, let's get that thing going. Alright, now that we did that, I'm going to start up the plane. Just so you know, I am going to be moving pretty quickly, so if you need to, well, pause and rewatch, then go ahead. It'll especially help with my audience retention if you do that. But anyway, what we're going to do is turn on the battery, then turn on the inverters, turn on the flight recorder, then the radio then the fire extinguisher then we flip these three switches there are the fuel pumps we uncage this turn on the APU and then hold down this button until it starts going alright we'll just have to give it a minute until this thing spools up Things are looking pretty active. I'm going to get out of the radio menu because I am not going to need that. I'm the only person in this server. I'm actually in a multiplayer server because it actually has the best training program I can see in the entire list of servers. Alright, so these are about spooled up. There we go. So I'm going to turn on the DC Gen, the AC Gen, and the aircraft should be powered now. Just going to flip these switches here. Flip these switches as well. Um, now, let's keep that switch here. Turn on these. These switches actually deal with the weapons. 
So you want to flip these on. You don't need to flip the cam, um, cam on, but you definitely want to flip this thing on. Because, you know, it is your IFF. Alright, so now you want to flip these switches. Those are for your gyros. And what that will do is that it'll align your heading indicator and it'll get your attitude indicator nice and alive. Then you want to press this button because then it'll align this heading indicator to the proper location. Apparently it works via magnetic heading and that's a very interesting technology. I can't imagine why the MiG-21 has it. But anyway, close the canopy, flip that lever, then flip this lever, get the flaps going, and I believe you need to flip this to on. I am not entirely sure, but you know, better safe than sorry. Then flip that switch on, don't need to bother with that one. Flip this switch, flip this switch, and then flip this switch. This switch is actually your radar. You want to flip it to standby instead of on. And you want to keep it on standby for quite a while. Last thing we want to do is to flip this switch. If you're running JATOs, do not flip this switch until you're on the runway. Alright. Gotta open this little safety cap. That's for my flares. And now I need to set up my weapons. First off, I'm going to turn this thing on. You can also turn on your gun cage as well. And illuminate it if you like. That's nice. But what's really important is that little gun sight in the center. I'm going to switch it to air to air with this switch. I'm going to keep it down on SAR. That stands for semi-active radar. I'm going to press this number one button. That will arm the guns, just in case I need it. Though, trust me, I will not need it. And let's see what else. That looks good, that looks good. Oh yes, I gotta flip this switch. Think of this as your simplified master arm switch. You want to get this safety cover out of the way before you fire, and once you do that, you should be good to go. Anyway, this plane is ready, I think. Yep, looks like everything's good. So, we are just going to taxi out of this hangar. And the way that you steer is that you apply the brakes, then you move the rudder pedals. So let's take a look at where the active is. Well, there is no active runway. I keep forgetting I'm the only one here. Alright, so we're good to go. Gonna increase throttle just a little bit. Now the only way you can steer is if you apply the brakes, then steer. So. It is going to take a little while. As I mentioned before on my MiG-21 review, I did actually have to deal with differential braking in a plane that I used to fly called the Grumman Tiger. But this is not differential braking. No, that was my mistake. What this is, is if I had to guess, when you apply the brakes, you're also sending hydraulic fluid to the nose wheel steering. That's my guess. Uh, the MiG-15 also works the same way. So, just something to keep in mind. Either way, things are looking pretty good. Just need to keep taxing. Probably let off the uh, throttle a little bit. definitely don't want to wear out the brakes, even though this aircraft is going to respawn anyway, whenever. Still just something I want to do. Now that's not to say that I want to keep everything by the book, because if I did keep everything by the book, then I wouldn't have just armed my weapons and made them susceptible 
to uh, going off while on the ground. Yeah, that's what I did. You would never do that in real life, but guess what? This is not real life. This is a simulator. You don't have to worry that much about safety. Safety is definitely a good thing to practice, but your life is not in danger if you fail in that regard. Ah, uh, the most monotonous part about this game is taxiing to the runway. Absolutely hate it, especially when the taxiway is incredibly long. And it sucks even more when it's multiplayer, so you can't alter the time rate either. But yeah, we're about to head onto the runway. And then when we do that, I'm going to check and make sure that everything is in the green then we'll take off we will shoot down a plane and that'll be it yes Truly, insanely boring. <laughs> oh well. I definitely gotta love the level of detail in this cockpit, though. However, I think that somebody should mod it to make it look good as new. If you can do that... Then that would be awesome. Oh, come on. Right, just need to double check and make sure that nobody is on the runway. Then again, I'm the only one on the server, as I keep saying. I think I would have noticed if there was any type of player or, yeah, any type of player that gets onto the server and joins said aircraft, or any aircraft for that matter. All right, so we're just gonna line up onto the runway as best as we can. Uh, when it comes to the MiG-21, you're probably not going to be perfect. Alright, that looks good. Alright, just going to put that the, to idle. I'm going to check and make sure that everything is good to go. I'm going to get that radar up and running fairly soon. Don't need to worry about radio. Don't need to worry about navs. Kind of need... don't really need to worry about oxygen either. My joystick's being a little bit finicky, but I will not worry about that. Anyway, there is one thing that I do need to mention. These pylons right here, they determine which pylon or which weapon is going to be active. One and two are for the inner pylons, and three and four are for the outer pylons. It is in the manual, but nobody ever told me about this. So, yeah, just... A uh, small little reminder. Alright, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to slowly increase the throttle, get it spooled up a little bit. And while it's spooling up, I'm going to check and see what type of enemy aircraft there are. Um, north of me, there are some Su 24s, there's some reconnaissance. And those F-16s are going to be doing cap, but I really don't think they do anything. The AN-30? Yeah, I should probably shoot that thing down. Um, the only problem is that that F-16 might get a little luck on me. So, huh, I'm not entirely sure. What should I pick? Ah, well, we get... All right, when you, by the time you get up to speed, you really don't have to worry about getting hydraulic fluid to the nose wheel steering. When you reach about 250 kilometers an hour, rotate upwards, 
and lift off. Then right shift G to unlock your gear, G to raise your gear. Wait until you get the three red lights, then hit control G to put it back in the neutral position. Alright, so what we are good with that. I am going to raise my flaps up. And then I'm going to see what I can shoot down. I'm going to say that AN-30 is my target, primary target. And it is at 24,000 feet. That's good enough for me. Alright, I believe that is the aircraft. Yes, that most definitely is the aircraft. Alright, so this is going to tell you the position of where the aircraft is in relation to your nose. And this dial right here, or this meter right here, is going to show you the distance. When it comes to a semi-active radar missile, you want it to be in between 20 and 30. So we are closing in. Alright, that looks good enough. Alright, Fox 1. Alright, so that thing's just going to travel to the, um, to the target. And that is a splash. Now, when it comes to the MiG-21, there is a very distinct advantage that it has over a lot of, well, fighter jets. It isn't really that good when it comes to maneuvering. Let's just get that out of the way. But at the same time, well, let me just say that you will have an issue with range as well. You will have an issue with having well, pretty much some pretty old technology that you have to work with. But the benefit, the main benefit I see in the MiG-21 is that if you do close in and get into range with the radar, then or with your missile, then what's going to happen is that you're going to have a damn near 100% kill rate with these missiles because of the range you are at. If you ever get locked up by MiG-21, you need to nosedive like hell. That is the only way you can survive. But if you are in a MiG-21 and you're in a multiplayer server and you decide to, well, give someone a bad time, and you happen to be in range to give that said person a bad time, well, guess what? They're not going to be able to dodge it, most likely. So that is a very nice advantage. Anyway, I'm going to see if I can get myself another kill. Let's see where I am going. Nope, I'm pretty much too far away from everything. Huh. Oh well. Anyway, that's how you shoot a semi-active radar missile. I guess it should be worth mentioning that if you do want to shoot an infrared missile, all you need to do is to switch to IR for infrared, choose a weapon from your pylon that is a heat-seeking missile, and then this reticle, whenever it locks onto a target, it will move right on the target, and that's your cue to shoot down the plane. Anyway, that should be it for today, so with that said, like and favorite this video and subscribe. There are plenty more videos where that came from, so you have a nice day.